When you bring a new pet snake home, you'll probably want to start holding it immediately, but that might not be the best thing to do. That's why today we are going to talk about what to do when you bring a new snake home. you'll want to do with your new pet snake is give it an overall just kind of general inspection to make sure it's in good health. If you're buying a snake at a reptile show or somewhere where you're there when you are buying that snake, it's nice because you can kind of give them an inspection right there on the spot. But if you buy a snake online, other than the pictures that you can view before purchasing it, you pretty much have to wait until they arrive before you can physically check it out. So let me show you what consists of a general inspection on a new snake. Down here we have, uh, we kind of set this up for today, but pretend this is a snake that just arrived here. We're opening up our box. It's a very exciting moment here because your new snake has just arrived. And oh, we're not using the anaconda for this, are we? Yeah, you had to check him over. We are not using I mean, he, tiny. Only, he only just bit me when I when I brought him up. No, so. did he really? Yeah, he got my finger. All the little teeny bite marks. Yeah, we are not using him yeah, for this you video. Are. No. You at least take him out. Look at your boy. Look, he's huffy today. He's in a he, bad he mood. He is in a bad mood today. But he can't have he's a big snake. He can't have <sighs> bad mood days. I don't want to use tiny for this video. <laughs> We're gonna switch you out for somebody else who's more handleable for an example video. I put a different animal in there. She unboxes herself. We can't use the bird for this either. But look, now she's unboxed and Yay! she's happy. You did it! Yep, yep, not using her. <laughs> okay, I found an animal to use for this video so we can move on finally. Oh, uh, both of mine would have worked just fine. <laughs> First things first, if your box arrives cold because it's winter time where you live or when you're getting your snake, you should open up the lid, take a peek at the animal inside, and your snake will arrive in either a bag like this if it's a larger species or larger or older snake, or it'll be in a small deli if it's a baby or a smaller species. And if it's cold, all you want to do is peek inside, make sure the snake is still alive and looking good, but then tie up the bag or seal up the deli and leave it alone for a couple of hours to gradually warm up to room temperature. The reason why you don't wanna take the snake out and warm it up manually in your hands or worse yet, put it into an enclosure where it's like 90 degrees is because the change of temperature from a snake that's around 40 degrees, cause being cold blooded, they match the temperature of their surroundings. So if you take a 40 degree snake, move it into a 90 degree enclosure it could easily go into shock and die. So that's why it seems weird, but you want to leave the cold snake in the cold bag in the box, leave the lid open of course, and then let it slowly become room temperature. If your snake does arrive cold, it might even look dead if it's cold enough, but snakes are very resilient and they usually come right back as soon as they warm up to room temperature. But if you're worried at all, definitely keep the seller in the loop because usually live arrival guarantees only work or are only applicable for the first 15 minutes or hour after arrival. The reason why sellers usually don't offer a live arrival guarantee much longer than an hour or so is because they want to ensure that that box is not sitting on a hot or cold front doorstep for more than, you know, half an hour or an hour before it's brought into regular temperatures. Ideally, you meet the FedEx guy at the door and take it from him. Yeah, or that's why if your snake arrives cold, you need to let the seller know right away so that they're aware of the fact that you did bring the snake in immediately after it arrived, but you're just letting it warm up to room temperatures, which may take a couple of hours. So that way the seller knows that you are doing the right thing. Okay, now your snake is a good temperature, whether you had to wait it out or not. You can take your snake out of the bay. We have a beautiful piebald ball python here today. And you'll want to do a general inspection of the entire snake right away. Again, the live arrival guarantees only last for an, uh, about 15 minutes to an hour or so, depending on the seller. Other vendors may have longer exchange policies than others, but it's still good to get that general inspection out of the way ASAP. And then your snake can start settling in afterwards. The three things you'll want to look over in regards to your snake's health are its body condition, its behavior, and any external concerns. For body condition, you'll pretty much just want to check over the entire snake's body and make sure that it came in at a good weight and it seems healthy and nice and robust. This is of course species dependent or species specific. Some snakes like green tree pythons are naturally a thinner bodied snake than say a ball python here. So of course know your species and what their proper body weight should be. 
Next, you'll want to look at their behavior. Is the snake moving around? Is it holding up its body well? Is it tongue flicking? These are all things that you should be observing for specifically to ensure that the snake is just behaving like a healthy snake would be. Looking at this piebald, he is exploring, kind of checking out his surroundings. He's tongue flicking just fine. And looking more closely, his forks on his tongue are spread out as he flicks. If they're stuck together, then, well, some snakes flick and their forks stick together sometimes, but it could could be, if it's a recurring problem with every flick, it could be a sign of an upper respiratory infection. If you're concerned about an upper respiratory at all, look at their mouths. If they have excess saliva around their mouth, or if they're drooling, that is not a good sign at all. If they're showing any open mouth breathing behavior, those are all signs of a, an upper respiratory infection. So another thing you can do is actually hold them up to your ear, and you can listen to their breathing. And if you hear any questionable wheezing, even though, again, some snakes kind of wheeze naturally, like routine articulated pythons we've noticed sometimes have a wheeze to them. So again, know the species and its natural behavior, but you can listen to their breathing sometimes too. And finally, you'll want to look for any external concerns. By this, I mean, are there any odd looking lumps along the body of the snake? Make sure their eyes look good, their nose is clear, there's no stuck shed. Are there any kinks along its spine? And for this, you're gonna have to stretch out your snake, kind of hold it at different angles. To check its spine, you can take your thumb and just run it down the spine itself. Make sure that, that all feels nice and straight and smooth. Kinks are more often seen towards the end of their body, like near their tail or in the tail itself, as well as lumps. If the snake comes in overweight, you'll often see fatty deposits near its cloacal area on the last third of its body. Not to say they can't appear further up the body too though. If a snake comes in overweight or if it just has an unusual cyst in its body, those can appear anywhere along its body. Another external concern to look for would be signs of scale rot in a snake. This is usually a result of too high of humidity that the snake was kept in and you can usually see scale rot. It, it actually looks like rotting scales. You usually see it on their belly scales because if they're sitting on wet substrate for too long, their belly scales are what's going to come into contact with that moisture. So therefore, those are the most susceptible to obtaining scale rot. This snake doesn't show any at all. He's actually, he looks great. This is a newer snake of ours. And we kind of did his inspection. So unfortunately, but not unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have any scale rot for me to show you today. And the last thing that you can pretty easily see during your general or initial inspection would be mites, which are an external parasite, which left untreated can can kill a snake, but they are thankfully very easy to, to treat. But it's something you definitely don't want to spread to the rest of your collection, so you want to check any new snakes for mites immediately. Mites are little tiny parasites that like to wedge themselves in between the scales, and they do drink the blood of a snake, so that's why they're wedged way in there. And generally to find them, I mean, it's really easy on a piebald ball python because they look like little black flecks in the scales. Not to say that these are mites, these are just black colored scales, but on lighter colored snakes they are definitely definitely easier to spot. Mites are often seen around the eyes of a snake, so if you can gently yet safely restrain a snake's head like this with your thumb on top, then you can typically get a close-up look at their eyes or around their eyes. He's not happy with this no, right now. No, he was not happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry. But you can usually see the uh, mites wedged in around their eyes too, as well as snakes with heat pits like ball pythons. The mites like to wedge themselves in those pits too, so definitely check those. And the last spot to check would be under their chin. They they love to wedge themselves in between the chin scales. So those are kind of the hot spot areas to check for mites that we've noticed in, or in our experiences. But check the whole body over and at the end, take your hand and wipe down the whole body and check your hand afterwards. And usually if they have mites, you'll see a couple of them come off after you wipe down their body. So just check your hands too. After you've done a complete check over of your snake and assuming everything's okay, if it's not, bring up any concerns again to the seller ASAP. But if everything is okay, then your next step is getting your snake into quarantine. We've had a lot of questions about how to quarantine, when to quarantine, or how long to quarantine snakes for. So we're gonna go into all of that next. Ideally, you should have its habitat or quarantine set up all ready to go before you even bring your snake home or before it's even delivered to your house. If you're an experienced keeper though and you have all the supplies and you're familiar with how they all work, 
you could probably set up their quarantine enclosure the day you get the snake, but if this is your very first snake, then in order to become familiarized with how thermostats work or other heating elements, then I highly recommend getting that all set up at least a couple of days before you receive your snake. The reason why we quarantine new reptiles is because if you were to put a new reptile in your, say, snake room and it had mites or some other disease or parasite, it would then transfer that disease to the rest of your collection. But if you keep them separated, you can uh, diagnose whatever is wrong first, treat them for it, and then when they get the all clear after so long, which we'll get into later, then you can put them in with the rest of your reptiles knowing that they are safe and healthy. So that all being said, if your new reptile is your very first reptile and therefore it's going to be the only reptile in your household. There's really no need to separate it from everything else because there are no other reptiles that it could potentially infect. So if it's your first snake, you can just put it right into its enclosure in the area of your house you want it to be long term and no separation is needed. If your new snake is not the only snake in your house, that's when it is a good idea to separate them in a different room altogether for their quarantine. The key to a successful quarantine enclosure is to keep everything as easy to clean and sterilize as possible. For that we recommend, I mean if you're going to keep a snake in a snake rack, you can just use one of the bins just in a different area than the rest of your collection. If you're using an enclosure like a, a tank or whatever you're planning on keeping it in permanently, that's fine, you can use the tank too, just in a separate room. To keep cleaning easy, for substrate we recommend just using paper towels. These are also a great way to be able to monitor the reptile's droppings, and if it has any mites, that you may have missed during its initial inspection, you will see those little black specks of mites against the white paper towels. If your reptile has higher humidity requirements, you can just simply mist down the paper towels with dechlorinated water. That being said, some keepers will use just their regular substrate like aspen shavings or cypress mulch for the quarantine substrate. It really just depends on not only the species of snake that is going to be in quarantine, but where it came from, like its breeder's reputation versus maybe being a Craigslist find or something. So the substrate is up to you in the end. Once you have your substrate figured out, then you'll want to of course add some hides so that the snake or other reptile can feel secure in, maybe some things to climb on, uh, a simple water dish which could be something as easy as a peanut butter jar lid honestly, it doesn't have to be something fancy. But for this my main recommendation is just to use items of decor or water dishes that are easy to disinfect. Obviously this is kind of set up for a smaller species of snake. This is even too small for the ball python that I had for a quarantine pin, but this is what just fit on camera best. He's not gonna fit in these hides very well. No, not really. <laughs> During the quarantine process, it's very important to make sure you wash your hands after interacting with your snake that is in quarantine. You of course don't want to pick up something from your new snake and then go and handle another snake of yours because I mean you're still exposing your other snakes to potential pathogens. So yeah, make sure you wash your hands after interacting with your new snakes in quarantine. Speaking of handling your new snakes in quarantine, when you receive your new snake, don't hold it, leave it alone. After its initial inspection, just put it in its quarantine enclosure and leave it completely alone. This is the hardest part about receiving a new snake because you of course want to hold it all the time because it's a new family member for you, but that is not in the best interest of the snake itself. Often snakes will refuse to eat food if they feel too stressed, and if they are both settling into a new home and being held on a regular basis, that is definitely going to increase the chances of them being too stressed to eat when you offer food for the first time. So completely leave them alone for a week, then offer food. If they eat, then that's great, it means that they're settling in nicely. Still leave them alone for a day or two to digest that first meal, and then you can start handling them. Some species and some individual snakes are a lot better at adjusting to new surroundings than others. We've had some bull snakes that we send off to their new homes, and the, the new owners fed them the same day they arrived, and they ate, and they were fine. Whereas if you get like a hognose snake, and you hold it even once during that first week, it's probably not going to eat for you. And other snakes, you'll look at them funny, and they refuse to eat. So it really depends on the snake on how quickly they're going to settle into their new homes, so that's why you want to at least give them about a week to kind of calm down. If after a few weeks your snake is behaving fine and eating well for you on a regular basis, then you should be in the clear and you should be okay to start handling it more frequently, assuming it has a day or two to digest after taking a meal, of course. But yeah, then you should be good to go. However, we still recommend quarantining your snake for at minimum one month. Again, if it's your one and only snake, 
you don't have to quarantine it or separate it because it can't infect any other snakes in your house or other reptiles in your house. But uh, one month is a good minimum quarantine length. We try to do a little bit longer and it depends on where the snakes came from. If we picked up a snake from Craigslist, we're gonna quarantine it for closer to three months, honestly. But if it came from a really good breeder, then it might be closer to a month. We have a couple of snakes that have been in quarantine for about a year and a half because they came from a situation where there were questionable health issues in the household. They seem just fine. We've had them tested for everything, but we still have them in quarantine and it's been about a year and a half just because we're paranoid. I know a lot of people, if they have like a wild caught animal and that's a debate for another day, catching wild reptiles, that's actually another video that we have on the channel. They will quarantine newly wild caught specimens for about a year before introducing them to the rest of their collection. Which makes sense. You never know what the wild is going to bring in. Yeah, exactly. Snakes can hide things for a long time. Yeah, and I think the ones that we've only really quarantined for about a month have been ones that we've been to their place yeah. looking at all their animals and then we also get the animals so we know right. them as friends and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it depends on the situation but it's ultimately up to you in the end. Well I hope you all learned something new today when it comes to bringing a new snake or any reptile home for that matter. A lot of these tactics can be applied to other reptiles not just snakes. We'd of course like to thank all of our amazing and generous Patreon backers for your fantastic support on this channel. We love all of you and thank you to everyone who's spending their time here with us learning about snakes. Oh, by the way, we have a pair of piebald ball pythons. You'll see more of them in the future. Yep. We uh, caved yeah, and we, bought uh, ball pythons. We failed on not ever breeding ball pythons. Yeah, we're going to breed pieds. Spoiler alert. But yeah. uh, I guess whoever is still here watching, we have pieds. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Speaking of handling snakes in quarantine, the, the oh, heart... Oh, jeez. That's okay. I have to do that okay, and redo yeah. it anyway. Did, did Danae bring her label maker Yeah, over? that's hers. Oh. We're gonna use it to label the, the jumping spiders. Alright. Well, I have another okay. use for it. Are you labeling this? Oh, are you labeling me? Yep. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Look, now we know who she is. <laughs> Emily. That's me. <laughs>